cutting this straight. And I'm excited about the concert coming. I, I mean, how many of y'all are excited about it? We're having Micah and Tyler here the last six days. I mean, that's just, God, God is at work, praise the Lord. But in Proverbs, before I get all the way into my new message, but I'm going to kind of go back through what I've been talking about. In Proverbs 23, 7, it says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So whatever we are thinking is what we are. Whatever we are thinking is what we will be. Amen? So if we want a change, if we want a change, our minds has to be renewed. Amen? Amen. Our, our minds has to be renewed. And then the Lord began to show me that we have a, have a worldly mind because we were we grew up in traditions of men and we grew up in a world system. And when we took on a worldly mind, and, and he began to show me last night that being under this worldly mind, we have taken off, we have put ourselves under a law, a mosaic law, because it's been passed down to us. So that law, I want everybody to get this, that law represents the worldly mind. And then we have a self-consciousness. That's our, that's our soul, our will, emotions, our intellect. Our self-consciousness tells us everything that is about ourselves. It's our self-consciousness. It's our soul. And then the Bible says that we also have the mind of Christ. And we're going to talk a lot about that today. That we have this mind of Christ. And I believe that there's a point in time that God breathes on us. And it awakens us to the mind of Christ and the righteousness. Christ. Amen? Amen. And it comes to save the soul from the worldly mindset. Y'all with me? Amen. It comes to save us from being under this law, this worldly law, and the concept of being under that law, and, and, the, and the power of God, the breath of God comes, and it saves our, our soul from being under that worldly mind, and it allows us to put on the mind of Christ. Amen. It, it awakens us to righteousness. I got a lot of stuff that I want to get through on the screen. You guys ready? Ready? ready. All right, here we go. We're going to go to uh, 1 Corinthians 2 9. 1 Corinthians 2 9 says, But as it is written, I have not seen or ear heard, neither has entered into the heart, remember the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for them that love them. Now we all have eyes and we have ears. But he's saying here, eyes have not seen nor hear. And neither enter into the heart of man the things that, which God has prepared for them that love them. Now, I'm going to drop a lot of meat today. I want you guys to get ready. Pay attention to this. Because this is, this is going to renew the mind. Amen. It's taking you out of that worldly mindset of being under a legalistic mosaic law that we that the world has put on us and, and to put on the mind of Christ. Now look what God says here. In verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by the Spirit. Right? By the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yeah, the deep things of God. Verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of the man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but of the Spirit of God. Verse 12. Now... We have received not the spirit of the world. We have not received the spirit of the world. The religious mindset, the Mosaic law, being under that system. But the spirit which is of God, that we might know, know the things that are freely given to us. Of God. Let me all know that we are free free here at Great Station. Amen. Because I'm renewing the mind to show you to get out of that legalism, get out of that religious, and get into the spirit of God so that everything that God has given to you is free. Amen? Amen. Verse 13. Which things also we speak, 
not in the words which man's wisdom teach, but which the Holy Ghost teach. Preparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Or with the Spirit. Verse 14. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolish. They are foolishness to him, nor can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. So if you're under the worldly mindset of being under the law and being under religion, that is a worldly mindset. That is being naturally minded. Amen? And you can't receive the things of the Spirit. You can't receive the things that God is trying to feed you because the world has overtaken your mind. Amen? We go to 16. It says, Who has known the mind of the Lord that He, the Holy Spirit, May instruct him. But we have. I wonder if I said this. But we have. The mind of Christ. Amen. We have this mind of Christ. We have the spirit of the God. The spirit of God living on the inside of us. Amen. We have the mind of Christ. We have the Holy Spirit. That's here to teach us all things. That's going to reveal to us. To come out of that religion into, into the kingdom. Amen. Into the kingdom of God. I ain't getting much help today. Hallelujah. That's all right. I'll preach. Amen. We have the mind of Christ. He created us in his own image. We have the mind of Christ. But we came into a world system. We came into a world system and the world has taken over our self-consciousness, our soul. That's why Christ had to come back to save our soul, to take us back to the revelation that we have the mind of Christ. We have the power of God living on the inside of us. We have the mind of Christ. And as he is in this world, so are we. Amen? So what i got to do is renew the mind. The mind has to be renewed. The next slide, it says here, this is some notes that I wrote down. It says here, the things that God has for you are spiritually discerned. The natural mind does not and cannot receive things from the Spirit of God. Your inheritance, your calling, your divine opportunities, your divine strategies, and your supernatural keys to unlock doors of blessings that are given by the Holy Spirit directly to your spirit. And they are spiritually discerned. Everybody say spiritually discerned. Only those. Next slide. Only those. Get this. Only those with the mind of Christ can spiritually discern what the Spirit has for them. When the Bible talks about renewing the mind in Romans 12, 2, it is telling you to renew your mind and to change your way of thinking from what it has been to the mind of Christ. Let, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, Philippians 2, 5. The mind of the flesh has been corrupted by the worldview, culture practices, unscriptural family values, and the deceptions of false doctrine. We need to be brainwashed. We need to brainwash our minds with the blood of Jesus and put on the anointed mind of Christ so that we can discern so we are in Christ and what the Spirit is leading us to do. I mean, this is powerful. The next slide says, what is the mind of Christ? The mind of Christ is more than just a way of thinking. It is a mindset. It is an attitude, values, and principles. The mind of, the mind of Christ has a revelation 
of who you are in Christ. What you can do through Christ as well as exactly how, when and where to do it. The mind of Christ spiritually discerns the Holy Spirit guidance. The mind of Christ is an anointed mind with the anointed thoughts, with anointed ideals, principles and values, and principal wisdom and, and knowledge. Next slide. How do we put on this mind? How do we put on the mind of Christ? Firstly, Jesus has already made it possible for us to have the mind of Christ in the new covenant of grace. So putting on the mind of Christ is already Christ has already made it easy because Jesus has already done all the works. Here are three simple steps to put on the mind of Christ. I'm teaching today. I want to teach this today because I want you guys to get this. Hallelujah. Because we're going to come out of the re religious mindsets, worldly, carnal mindsets that we've been brought up with. And to show you guys that we have the living God on the inside of us. And we can be operated by the Spirit. And we can be led by the Spirit. Because we have this mind of Christ. Hallelujah. There's three simple steps to putting on the mind of Christ. You ask the Holy Spirit to help you put on the mind of Christ. The Holy Spirit is here to teach the guy to use your one with your counsel. Two is receive the mind of Christ by grace through faith. Oh, you have to receive the mind of Christ by grace through faith, through believing that. Not by you learning it, just by believing that. Simple. Step three, take every take time out of every day to meditate. On the living word of God. Even if it's five minutes, ten minutes. You need to take time and have a relationship in the word of God. So the spirit of God and the, and the Holy Spirit can teach you the things. And keep, teaches you the truth. I'm going to say cut it straight. I'm going to go to Galatians 5. See, when you come to put on the mind of Christ and you realize you have this mind of Christ and you are led by the Spirit of God and you are walking by the Spirit of God and you're walking in this freedom, you stand fast, therefore, in the freedom, therefore, Christ has made us free. Christ has made us free. We don't need to become free. We've already been free. See, your mind has to catch up to the finished works of what Christ has already done from before the foundations of the world. And he says here, Paul says, see, there must be a problem here. Because he says, be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage, right? Be not entangled again with this yoke of bondage. What is that yoke of bondage? That's putting yourself under a religious system again. Putting yourself under the carnal mind. Putting yourself under the worldly mind. And putting yourself under the law. How do we know this? We'll go on. I'll show you. Let's see what Paul has to say. Verse 2. He says, be I, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. If you put yourself under any type of law, you make Christ to be no effect. He, he's not going to profit you nothing. The, the, the mind of Christ is not going to profit you nothing because you still have a worldly mindset. Amen? Verse 3, he says, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. See, if you put yourself under the law, you are a debtor to do the whole law. It's impossible for everybody to keep the law. You don't even know the 613 Hebrew laws. I don't know all the 613. But if you put yourself under a law or under legalism or under the Mosaic law, you become a debtor to that law. You, you fail. You're guilty. Your mind is guilty and it cannot receive the spiritual things of God. You, you're not walking in the spirit. You're walking in the flesh. My shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It says here in verse 4, Christ has become no effect unto you. 
Whosoever of you that are justified by the law, Christ has become no effect to you, unto you. Whosoever who is justified by the law. Y'all see the difference there? That's, that's why we got to cut it straight. You can't go to a, a legalistic institution and be justified by the law and also receive the promises that was given by Christ. Hallelujah. You can't walk in the spirit and also in the flesh. You can't walk in the spirit and also in a carnal mind putting yourself under a law. Hallelujah. Because you just put the yoke of bondage back on yourself. You just became a slave to the world system and its ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 5 says, For we, through the Spirit, everybody say, through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. We wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Not by works. By faith. So we wait. People who have the worldly mind has to wait for the righteousness to come, for the Spirit to come, for God to come, to give you that revelation that you are right standing with God because you believe upon the Son and the finished works that He's already done for you. Amen? Ain't nothing you can do to save yourself. Ain't nothing you can do to lose your salvation. As long as you have faith in Christ, you are in right standing with God. Hallelujah. I didn't say it. Paul said it. Righteousness by faith. Verse 6. For Jesus Christ, for in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but by faith which worketh by love. It's the love, you know? It's the love. God doesn't want your works, He wants relationship. He wants faith. He wants you to believe on the Son. Hallelujah. Check out what it says in verse 16 here. Galatians 5, 16. Now I want you all to come out. And what I'm showing you guys today is to put on the mind of Christ, to be led by the Spirit of Christ, by what the Word tells you, and not what the world has told you. Hallelujah. Verse 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, see, religious mindset is going to tell you filling the lust of the flesh is having bad behavior. But that's not what Paul's talking about here. Paul's saying if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You will not be a part of the carnal mind. You will not put yourself under the Mosaic law. Right? See, religion is so good at taking the flesh and calling flesh behavior. Right? They can identify bad behavior and they say, man, he is worldly. Oh, my God. He is worldly. He is fleshly. That's a religious, worldly mindset that's telling you that. Hallelujah. But what Paul's saying is when you walk in the Spirit, you won't be of the world's way of thinking. You won't, be, you won't put yourself under a law. You won't put yourself under a legalistic institution of what you've been brought up with. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, man, I, I see a lot of, when you come and walk in the Spirit and get the revelation of who you are and you get the mind of Christ, you can identify legalism. You can identify religion, and I see it everywhere. And people come into the church looking to get free, hallelujah, and they only get the yoke of bondage. They only get put under a Mosaic law that was long done away with it. In Romans 10, 4, it was done away with, it was put away, but you still come into a Christian church and they put, you, they put on the yoke of bondage of you and tell you that you need to do all these things and act like all these things in order to please God. But see, God is not pleased with the worldly way of thinking. He is only pleased that your righteousness comes by faith and only by faith. Faith plus nothing. Oh, uh, Starting to get warmed up here. Watch out, y'all. Hallelujah. Verse 17 says, For the flesh lusts against the spirit. For the flesh, the worldly mindset, is lust against the spirit of God. Amen. And the spirit against the flesh. And these things are contrary of the one to another. So they, you cannot do the things that you would. Look at 18. 
But if we are led of the Spirit, see, this is where Paul tells you right here. There's no other way around it. Right? Paul's telling you, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the Ten Commandments. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. You're not under the old mindset. You're not under the old creation. You're not under the old covenant. Right? That's why you've got to cut the word straight because, see, the old covenant was never for us. It was for the nation of Israel. So Paul says here, Man, I show up on the scene, God gives me this revelation, and I'm walking in the Spirit, and I see all these people putting on the yoke of bondage and putting themselves under a law. And he's talking to Gentiles here, and he is an apostle sent to the Gentiles to show them that they are righteous by faith, just believing on Christ. But somebody from Judea comes down off of the mountain and tries to put them under the law, trying to say, yeah, Christ is your Savior, but you still got to do the law, hallelujah, and that puts up the yoke of bondage on these people. That's the same thing that happens in the church today. When you come into a, a religious church, they take you over to an old covenant, they take you to the letters that's written in red, and they start to tell you that Jesus said these things, now these things you ought to do. They don't, nobody points out if you go to Romans 8 where Jesus says that he is a minister to the circumcision. He is a minister to the Jews. Jesus' earthly ministry was to the Jews. He came. He says, I'm only called to the lost sheep of Israel. He says, I came to my own and my own received me not. But then here comes Paul. God has a separate plan for the Gentiles. That if I can get the Holy Spirit in these Gentiles, hallelujah, and they can get this revelation that they are not under the law, they're going to walk of the Spirit. They are going to manifest who Christ is in your life. That you have this mind of Christ, hallelujah. Mm -mm. Let's go to Romans 3.19. Y'all good? Check this out. And we're talking about a worldly mind, a worldly religious mind, and walking in the spirit, being having the mind of Christ. There, you've got to cut this straight, and you've got to cut it straight in the word. You can't say you're walking in the spirit and doing things of old covenant practices. No. Man, there's so many worldly mindsets. There's so many people in the pulpit today that are worldly and they're preaching Jesus. Because they have not cut the word straight. They have not divided God's word straight. They have not brought forth the new covenant, which we have in the finished works of Christ. Hallelujah. Romans 3.19 says, For we know. It's all about knowing, y'all. It's all about coming to know God's word. Hallelujah. Man, I just praise God. I praise my Father, especially on Father's Day, that I come and He's given me this revelation of His Word. Hallelujah. So I can know. So I can know that we know that whatsoever the law saith, whatsoever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. Hello. Hello. That means some people wasn't under the law. Right? It's only talking to the ones who are under the law. Right? And I'm here to tell you, whosoever's under the law, it has a carnal, worldly mindset. They have separated themselves from, from the promises of Christ. They have separated to where Christ can be no effect in them. Why? Because Christ doesn't bring a carnal mindset. Christ brings the Spirit. Christ brings liberty. That's why once you get the revelation, you stand on the liberty. You stand on the freedom. You're free. Hallelujah. Now we know what that whatsoever the law saith, it saith to him who is under the law. That's worldly. That every mouth may be stopped. And all the world, everybody says system. That world there in Greek is system. 
It's a system. It's a system that may become guilty before God. That, that guilty means condemned. So people put themselves under a law so they can condemn themselves before God. But Christ came to take us and out of that law. He was the end of the Mosaic law. And he sent forth Paul to bring forth this revelation that we have this mind of Christ. That we are no longer under the law, but we are under grace and we have righteousness by faith. Hallelujah. Look at 20. Therefore, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh be justified in his sight. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Y'all get that Facebook right there? So you're trying to do a law to get justified. And Paul's telling you a revelation there that just you can't get justified by the law. Well, we got 90% of the Christians out there trying to justify themselves by a law that was done away with. Mm. For the law is the knowledge of sin. Whew. For the law is the knowledge of sin. If you take away the law, there is no more knowledge of sin. Why? Because you're in Christ and you're made free and you are free and who the sun sets free is free to be. Hallelujah. So if you take away that knowledge, the knowledge, you take away the knowledge of sin, the law, it takes away the knowledge of you being worldly. And it puts on the mind of Christ. When you take away the law, you take away the worldly mindset. And now you you have that revelation that you have the mind of Christ that has made you free, right? Verse 21. But now, I must say, but now. But now the righteousness of God without the law, without the law is manifested. So if you take away the law, then you bring forth the righteousness. If you take away the law, then you break forth the mind of Christ. If you take away the law, then righteousness, right standing with God, who you are in Christ is manifested. Mm. So see, it's no longer by you acting right, doing right, being right. That's old covenant. In the old covenant, they had to do things to please God. God said, if you do these things, I will bless you. If you do these things, I will raise you up and bless you. If you do these things, act that way. Follow all the Mosaic laws and do these things, I will bless you. But see, that covenant was done away with. Now, now, if you do away with the law, righteousness is manifested by faith, not by works. Faith plus nothing. You are righteous because of the finished works of Christ. You are righteous because of the finished works of Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law of the prophets. Oh my. I, it takes me back. I want to share something with you in John 3. Actually, I'm going to go there. I don't have it on the screen. But Jesus, when Jesus went to Nicodemus, you know, how many of y'all know that story? Jesus went to Nicodemus, or Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. And he says, what, what must we do to be born again? If I ask Christians today, how did you become born again? You know what they're going to tell me? That I came to the altar. I believed in my whole heart. And I confessed with my mouth that Jesus died and that God raised him from the dead. That's how I become born again. Right? We all heard it that way. Amen. Romans 10 and baptized. That's how Christians believe that they became born again. But there's a song wrong with that. Because when Nicodemus came to Jesus, Jesus didn't die yet. Bam. Bam. 
So when Nicodemus asked Jesus, what can I do to be born again? He didn't say, hey, believe on me that I raised, uh, God raised me from the dead because he didn't go to the cross yet. Hallelujah. Right? When Jesus said this, he didn't die yet. What he was saying, the new birth, the new birth is a born again of the Spirit. That you come out of this worldly mindset of being under the law and you get the revelation that you are born again of the Spirit. Right? Hallelujah. That now I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring forth the word right now that's going to really make you born again. Hallelujah. Because it ain't about coming down and confessing all your sins. See, that's an old covenant. Now you've got a rebirth that's in Christ that you put on the mind of Christ and now you're born again of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, dropping the bomb there. Hallelujah. What he's saying in the new birth is a born again of the Spirit. To be Christ-minded means you are born again and, and you got out of the worldly way of thinking, the religious way of thinking. I looked up born again and then I started to run around the house because it means from above. It means from the beginning. Right? See, you didn't get, see, the, the born again effect happened before the foundations of the world. Because, see, God finished all his work. You were already in the spirit. You already had the mind of Christ. But, see, you took on the deception of the world. Hallelujah. You took on the deception of the world. I'm going to go to John 3 here. Y'all good? Check this out. Just go there. Just go to see what Jesus said here. John 3. Can't, you don't have this. Verse 3. John 3, 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say to thee, Except the man be born again, he cannot perceive. He cannot see the kingdom of God. If you are under the law, you're not seeing the kingdom. Hallelujah. If you're, if you're putting yourself under works, you have not come to see, to perceive. You are not born again until you can perceive the revelation of this to enter into the kingdom of God. I mean, all know that you're entering into the kingdom today. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, except the man be born again, he cannot see, cannot perceive the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus says unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? That's about like a religious mindset. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Question mark. Here I go. said, can he enter the second time into his mother womb and be born? And Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, now that water represents cleansing, the cleansing of the mind from a worldly mindset. He said, unless a man be born of that water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And he says in verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Hmm. You all see what I'm saying here? It's pretty easy to divide God's word, to cut it straight, to get yourself out from under the law, and get yourself in righteousness by faith. To, and then you have been born again, you have the mind of Christ. And that's all it takes. Then you're able to receive the things. You have now entered into the kingdom. That means you can, that you've been rebirthed. Hallelujah. That you, 
You are Christ-minded, that you are free, that you are made whole, that salvation comes to you freely, that you cannot lose your salvation because you're not under a law that brings forth the knowledge of sin, that you are now walking in the Spirit and you're not fulfilling the lust of the flesh, that you are now walking in the kingdom of God and you're not in a world system and letting worldly mindsets pull you back into the yoke of bondage and you are able to be free as Christ has made you from the beginning, that He gave you the right, He gave you the mind of Christ from before the foundation of the world, if we go to Ephesians 1, that you were holy and blameless in Him before this world was even created, God created you holy and blameless and free, and then you got into a world system, and you took on knowing the eating of the tree and knowing good and evil would brought forth a merit system, and they said if, you're, if you do good, God will do good for you, if you do bad, God's going to punish you. Started eating of this worldly mindset, but I'm here to tell you that God sent forth an apostle that would take us out of that legalistic law based system and show you the righteousness comes by faith because of the finished works of Christ. Hallelujah. So now that we are walking of the Spirit of God, we are no longer under the law. You can hear me, Facebook people. You can't, you can't come in here and try to say that we need to do all these things to become righteous with God. You have just put on the yoke of bondage. People stay so much in the old covenant. And they stay so much in trying to please God. They stay so much in doing works in order to please God. That they are missing the, the, the promises that Christ come to give us. They take on a religious mindset, judges them. Oh, look how he's at. Look at what he did last night. Look at, look at his flaws. Every one of the flaws that you can point out, there was a law for that. And that brought forth the knowledge of it. That's the reason why you know it. <laughs> That's the reason why you know it. The reason why you know you've done wrong because there was a law brought forth to show you that you were wrong. Right? But I'm here to tell you there's a law of righteousness. Amen. That over exceeds the law of being under bondage. Now there is a law of righteousness and you receive that not by your work, but you receive that by faith. Just God's way. Yeah. Amen. He didn't come to be persecuted on the cross because of your bad behavior. He came because of love. Amen. And he put himself on the cross so you can get this revelation that you have this mind of Christ. Hallelujah. That you would have this revelation that you can go back before the foundations of the world that you were created in him in love. God is love. God is love. God ain't what the world has created God to be as a punishment. He is love. So, when I see so many people stuck, it's because it's the way they think. When I see so many people struggling, it's because it's the way they think. As a man thinketh, so is he. In order to change the he, you got to change the thinking. And the only way to change your thinking is getting yourself out from under a law that's putting you into that thinking and get yourself free in the Son who the Son has set you free. Amen. Amen. He has set us free. I'm going to preach it so I know somebody's getting it because I know what I feel. Hallelujah. I know what it's done for me. I know what the Son done for me. Hallelujah. When I say the Son set me free, it doesn't mean that I still have got to do works. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Christ came and died for you, but you still got to act right. No. Who the Son sets free, finished works, is free indeed. You will always fall short if you put yourself under a law. Because, see, that law was put in place to show that you need a Savior. 
Operating the get right. Operating the act right. That's good. Everybody I know got issues. That's right, everybody. everybody I know, the Bible says, fall short of the glory of God. Everybody. If you put yourself under the law, you're always going to fall short, right? Because, see, the flesh is not of the spirit. The flesh is of the flesh. The worldly mind is of the worldly mind. The worldly system is of the worldly system. If you want to enter into the kingdom of God, you've got to get out of that worldly mindset and put on the mind of Christ and see that the finished works have already been completed from before the foundations of the world that you were created in Him in love and you have the mind of Christ. Don't put yourself under some legalistic worldly man's wisdom system that has tried to put you under a yoke of bondage. Paul could not believe it here. He says, you come to know this truth, and then you want to go back to the law after you've been set free. You want to slip back into this law. Man, I see people do that too. I have seen people do that too. They come in here, and God used me to free them up. You know why? Man, ooh, I feel the spirit right now. You know why? It's a pride. It's pride. People want to feel like they had something to do with getting themselves righteous with Christ. Whether it's through ties or giving or acting right. Oh man, they, they want, it's a prideful thing. It puts works on you and your self, uh, uh, self justification on yourself. But he says there that no law is going to justify the flesh. Come on, y'all. Nothing, no thing. Can justify you. Nothing can make you right with God. Amen. Nothing can make you right with God. Amen. Even on your best day, the Bible says you're filthy rags. Right. Amen. Your righteousness is as filthy as rags. If you put yourself under a law, just put it on. Just putting yourself under a law makes you filthy. Just putting yourself under a law makes you unrighteous. Just putting yourself under the law makes you disobedient. Just putting yourself under the law, you make Christ to be no effect. It's spiritual. It's spiritual versus worldly. It's spiritual versus carnal. So when you leave out here today, man, don't put yourself under some legalistic system. I always say when you run, if you get up in the middle of the night, you got to go to the bathroom and you're running through the bedroom and you hit your toe on the end of the bed, that F word probably going to come out, hallelujah. But when the F word comes out, it ain't going to be the word favor. When that F word comes out, hallelujah, you don't have to say, oh Lord, forgive me. Oh, man, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to act that way. I didn't mean to tell that person off. I didn't mean to flip that person off. I had anger issues. See, you got anger issues from being under a world system. Hallelujah. That trained you to act that way. That world system has not made you free. Hallelujah. You can be walking around like you got it together. You can be walking around like you got it all together and you got yourself and your behavior all together. Hallelujah. But when that system, oh, when that system has trained that mind as a man that if so is he. When that system has trained your mind, you can look all holy. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they look all holy. Jesus said, hey, man, you got I'm, I'm from above, man. You guys are from beneath. I'm from above. I got, I got a mind from above. When I tell you you guys are born again, you tell me that it's from above. And you tell me that it's a mind from the beginning, that you've been holding your righteous all along. That the world called you. The world called you a sinner. Hallelujah. But I've been in Christ all along. That's right. That's good. And we stand. And we up the Actually, this helps. Come up here. You walk by the Spirit, you hear it.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I want to praise Jesus today, our Father. Hallelujah. Come and made us free. Made us free, y'all. We're free, man. We're free to live. We're free to walk in this world but not be of the world. See, if you walk in this world and be of the world, that means you are falling under a law and you are going around judging people, condemning people because they act this way, they act this way. They always say that I can bring any two people together and you can get together and point out each other's flaws all day. All day. And the only reason why you're pointing out somebody else's flaws, right, is because it takes the focus off yourself. It really does. How about just look at, take inventory of yourself and your own flaws. And say, God, who? Man, I thank you, Jesus, that you came down. Man, that you made me righteous. That you made me righteous. That you made me righteous when I couldn't be righteous. And so many people are stuck. There are so many people are stuck. If we can stand this morning, hallelujah. Somebody shout Hallelujah. That is which is born of the spirit is spirit. Where you all come from? Spirit. Come from the spirit. We're not born of some flesh. We're not born. Of, we're not born again because we came up and confessed our sins. Nobody's ever even looked up the word confession in the Greek. Look it up. Look up the word confession in the Greek. You know what it means? We've been taught that it means to ask for forgiveness. I need to give, I need to give confession because I was bad last night. That's what we were taught. Look up the word confession in the Greek. You know what it means? It means that you give thanks to God and acknowledge the new covenant that He brought forth. That's true confession. That's going to give God the glory. Hallelujah. See, that's going to take the glory off of man and put it on God. That's true confession. But so many people are stuck. You know why? I keep saying this and I feel this. You know why people are stuck? For one thing, when they are taught the truth, they don't pay attention. Or they're still stuck in their own way. Or they got better things to talk about. Or better things to do. So they stay stuck. They stay stuck in a world system. They're brought up and their grandparents is telling them right off the right off the get-go. Don't do that. Don't, don't touch that. They're punished for their behavior. Then you go to school, then you got the counselors and teachers. This authority. Sit down. So at all, we go through this world of being trained, of trying to make us behave. And how we all know that only brings out the rebellion in us. Right? You tell the kid not to do it, they're going to want to do it. We're taught in a world system to lie right off the bat. Hey, Gary, did you eat, was you in the cookie jar? And I got chocolate all over my face. No, Mom, I didn't eat no cookies. Didn't want to get in trouble. Hallelujah. Stuck. Stuck in a world's mindset. And Christ that gave us free. Finish what Christ has already done. Let's raise our hands this morning. I'm going to pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father God, do what only you can do. I speak right now to everybody that's heard this word today. That they are now born again. Not by man's wisdom, or by man's knowledge, or by man's ways, but by the Spirit of the living God. That they wash their minds and renew their minds, and they put on the mind of Christ. Now we can receive the inheritance of the kingdom. Your word says, Father God, that it's your pleasure, and it's your pleasure to give us the kingdom. Pleasure. And the kingdom and the gifts are 
forgive it without repentance. The Bible says that the kids are forgiven without repentance. But we're training to come up and repent. I'm training you to repent from what they call repent to what the word means by repent. To change your thinking, to change your mind from a worldly, legalistic mindset and put on the mind of Christ. Lord, we just thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' precious name, everybody say amen. amen. Happy Father's Day, everybody.